Hey everyone, wanted to make a video explaining my production process behind my Rap Snish Knish's cover, MF Doom Tribute. Saw a lot of great guitar tutorials out there already. If that's what you're looking for, I encourage you to look at those. Also, I encourage you to do your homework and you, you have everything you need to, to learn it either from my video or someone else's video. One of the best tools that you have are your ears, so um, I know that you can you can do it. I didn't think I had much to add there, so I wanted to show my process behind the track that I made. I made it in about 10, no, 20 minutes probably, 20, 30 minutes back in January this year. So yeah, let's dive in and see. bumping so yeah you can see it's small track a small sort of song here we got only five audio tracks that I'm using so let's take a break break them down one by one I was playing this bass part through my Squire little Mustang bass it's like a guitar sized bass here's the raw signal so you can hear, it's, it's, it's not the biggest bass sound in the world, so I started by adding this E-Bass EQ, it's a preset, it's got a nice low end boost, a little bit of cut of the highs, uh, this, this raw signal, the bass sound is a little nasally. You can hear this is a bit weightier. And then I'm also adding some pretty heavy compression from my UAD Fairchild plugin. When I'm making beats really quick, I usually reach right for the factory presets. Just saves a lot of time. Uh, I go back and I, I tweak these settings. If I'm doing a big production, if I'm putting in final work for a song that's going to head to Spotify or streaming platforms, and usually I'll make those tweaks and then they'll be revisited by a mix engineer. So yeah, this was again a really quick beat. Um, so if pr presets are always coming in handy when I make those. So let's listen to the roads. Nice. So here's the raw sound. Very different. I'm playing a Rhodes Mark One. It's a stage model, so it's one of the keyboards without the big suitcase speaker underneath it. It means it's got a bit of a duller sound. The action on Rhodes is notoriously kind of spongy. It's not like a normal piano where you can press down and get a great response. It's a bit, it's got a lot of resistance. So this keyboard sound, when I bought my Rhodes, it's a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. I was really after that sort of hiatus coyote molasses that line you know that beautiful Rhodes bell sound so I couldn't I can't say that my Rhodes sounds exactly like that but you know audio engineering sometimes it's like it's like playing chess it's like problem solving you know you want you start from wherever you are and you work with what you got and this is what we got it's a very pretty sound I started by adding an EQ. Uh, listen to that, see? Already much more of the bell, the high end of the instrument. It's a lot less dull. Of course, I'm using a preset off. Oh, very beautiful. I'm adding some little radiator. Nice, another Rhodes preset. Um, this is a great plugin. I use sort of like tube emulation. I do have a Fender Princeton from 1965 that the road sounds great through. I didn't re record it through that amp because I was lazy. Uh, if you are an aspiring audio engineer and you're working on your own music, I encourage you to not be lazy, especially if you have the capability to not be lazy. Do it the right way. If I was gonna release this song, you know, on my album, something that was a project that was very near and dear to me, I would be recording this through my tube amp, getting the best sound I could. I just wanted to do a quick little tribute to MF Doom, so this was going to cut it for me. Uh, but yeah, don't be lazy. 
Last but not least, let's take this sound to outer space. The flanger. And you might ask, how did I know to add a flanger? Um, I totally didn't. I, my Part of my process is just fucking around. Uh, oftentimes, I will start with a sound like this that's a little more plain, and I'll just go through, you know, I have my arsenal of plugins. I'll go through four, five, six different plugins until I say, that's a cool ass sound, you know, that's the sound I want. And this time, I think it, it just, it was just a flanger. It gave me that really sort of airy, aerodynamic fighter jet Rhodes sound that I wanted. And it sounds great with the bass. And I did add this sweet little on this on the last chord in the progression. I did add a a a note that sort of changes the context of the whole chord progression, uh, which I, I really enjoy. It makes it makes this a little more serious. It's you know I, I wanted to put my own spin on the song, so let's listen to the electric guitar. Yeah, about that last point. Uh, if you're if you're serious. You know, and you really like the chord progression, I encourage you to try to figure it out with your own ears. Happy to answer what the chord progression was uh, in the comments. So let me know if you're curious, but I encourage you to try and figure it out. Let's listen to the guitar. Sick. Shred it. Raw sound. This isn't totally raw. I was actually performing this through the UAD Plexi Classic Marshall plugin. This comes. This came free with my Apollo purchase. Uh, these plugins are really great for those of you who know the UAD. You probably are very familiar with them. They're they're very expensive, but they're, they're usually really fantastic. Uh, so I was. This is a great, probably the best distortion overdrive plugin I've seen for guitar. C computers are not very good at doing overdrive plugins because. It's, it requires a lot of analog sort of harmonics and warmth to get it right, but this one's great. Um, so I was running it through that. Some compression, just to beef it up. I think this here's an example of a sound that I did not use. I was trying this chorus sound, but it, it, it alters the guitar sound quite a bit. Listen. Notice it also spread, does quite a stereo spread. I decided that was sort of not the vibe we were going for. Add a bit of EQ. Scoop out that sort of boxy middle hertz range. And then here's where the magic really happens. First, a bit of long verb. And then the delay. One thing that I do to speed up my workflow is I have a logic template that I open all of my projects from. And these are the starting verbs settings that I work with. So this is usually, these are some of the first verbs and delays that I'll reach for. Um, you know, again, these are just presets that I like. If I was actually finishing this song, I would be adjusting these, tweaking them more intently. But just because this was a quick little YouTube beat, I decided to go with presets. Also, you know, it's good to experiment with how much you're sending to these verbs and delays, because that sometimes you might have the right sound, but the wrong amount of send. For example, this long bright verb. You know, that might be the right sound for another song, but obviously we wanted something a little bit more clear cut. Same goes for the delay. You know, that's obnoxious, but there is a lot of delay going on here. It easily could have been a lot less noticeable. I liked it very prominent. 
So that's how I get the guitar sound. This next track is really funny. I do have this in all of my Logic templates as well. Just adds a nice bit of analog warmth to a track, especially when you're recording everything into the, in, straight into the laptop. Sometimes you're missing out on some of that, you know, you don't want your tracks to sound pristine and digital. I don't want my tracks to sound pristine and digital. So this sort of nice little psychological trick on the brain. There it is. Too much is obnoxious. You know, it sounds like a waterfall. We don't want it. We just want a nice little... Nice little tickle. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, and then, of course, last but not least, got my friend playing drums. This is a really instructive moment, I think, because let's listen to the raw drum sound. Excellent drummer. I think this is when Makia had first started recording in his studio, he, and he was just starting to get experience. So this is a very th thin drum loop. My girlfriend is texting me about something. Uh, this is a very th thin drum loop. You notice there's not a lot of bass. This is not a Dilla loop. This is not something with a lot of punch in the low end, which is something, you know, it's especially like the actual drums in, in the song, in the original song, uh, Coffin Nails. So you can try to add a lot of low end to a loop like this, but you, when you start with something in the source that's so different from what you want to make it, oftentimes you're better trying to just work with what you have. And so this, this sort of thin drum sound informed how I wanted to shape the sound and sculpt it with my plugins. So first I did add some EQ to beat up the low end. Off and on. Let's get that loop going. And you'll notice this is a great uh, preset because it's also adding a little bit of high-end shelf. This is good when you're mixing overhead mics, cymbals, hi-hats into the mix. You want to sound a little crispier. So yeah, just a preset that I go to often. Quick, easy, you know, little drum sculptor. So then next, uh, I love the captator. And that's obviously doing a lot. Off. Now they're starting to sound beefy, but they're obviously still lacking in that really low end sub region. So I decided rather than trying to make them something that they're not, let's keep them light and breezy and ethereal. That's where the phaser came in. And that just sounds cool as fuck. And now I think the sort of my proudest moment if you ask me for this track, production-wise, uh, in the theme of being light and breezy, this, is, this also just goes back to experimenting and throwing different things on different instruments. I, I just decided to throw a really long reverb on the drums. And most people don't do this, or you know, this is sort of rule breaker moment because you don't want to put long reverb on a kick drum. Usually things with a lot of low end, when you put reverb on drums, bass, you're gonna clog up the entire mix, it's gonna sound muddy, it's gonna sound like shit. In this case, the drums were sort of thin enough that it just left this beautiful layer of ambiance. Let's listen. And in the mix. Now if we listen without the reverb on the drums, you notice that you're gonna really miss it. All of a sudden it sounds a bit more like jazz band practice and not like this epic space odyssey of groove. So let's add that. Let's listen one more time and I'll add it back in. So yeah. Putting plugins where they don't belong can turn out really well. Uh, anyways, that's it. 
the, that's short video. Let me know if you liked it. I'd love to do more production, breakdown, teaching type videos. Please let me know what was helpful and what you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. Peace. See ya.